you have to frame your mind differently. For so long, musicians framed, I mean, at least commercial musicians, framed their minds around, you know, the album. My music should be that, lo that long because the album is that long. And before it was probably the EP or the jukebox. And the jukebox were only supposed to play less than two minutes and a half. These were old Elvis songs that left two minutes and a half because people were supposed to pay more and more to really listen again to the song. So this has completely exploded with internet. There's no boundaries. You can do whatever you want. I mean, to a certain extent, you still have to deal with labels. You still have to deal with all incumbents that still think the, the way they used to think. So I'm not saying that you have to completely forego what they think, but there's no frame anymore. Do not think inside a box. I mean, everybody says that. I actually believe it's not even do nothing outside the box. There's no box. There's actually no more box with digital. So you can do whatever, whatever you want. And on that, thank you guys. Woo! I'm sorry, I'm going to be gone. I was watching the clock. I don't know about everybody else, but for me, I want you to talk like double the amount of time with anyway. I've got so, so many things to ask anyway, but I'm not going to get started. So this microphone is for you now, whoever wants to get started. Um, what you said about how um, C, like CD was a frame, everything was a frame, and um, by touch it's only give it value. If there's no frame anymore because of the internet, I've heard a few people say this, and it's something that I as an artist think about a lot. Should we not look at albums anymore? To hell with making albums and just making individual songs and more music videos and just put more material out there in a small so amount of time. I didn't have time. I went. It was one slide that I skipped because I, want, I didn't want to bore you for too long. One other thing I believe in is there are purposeful. So you have the experience of the content, or the content is music. The experience is everything that goes around it. So you still have to create a content. That's your passion. I'm sure that most of you, when you create music, is not because. You want to make people happy, or probably some of you want to make money as well. And the experience, maybe uh, the experience of being a live concert. I've never been. I've been on stage, but not as, a, as an artist. So there, are all of this. But the content is still key. What I think it is key here is this content. You can rep repurpose it in many, many different ways. And I think that's the way. If you look at uh, an industry that has been hit as hard as you guys in, in general is news industries, so newspapers, journalism. Nobody, you know, pays for news anymore. So I pay for the Economist. That's pretty much it. Uh, the way they haven't succeeded, but the way they do is they try one piece of content, so one article, and they say the New York Times is a very successful event. They say, okay, every article becomes a homepage. Every article is a destination, and what can we? We can use that paragraph and send it there, you know, Twitter or Facebook or whatever. They repurpose the same content that frame. They repurpose it all around. I think music, as I said, you want to create unique, you want to um, have a lot of unique experiences. A unique experience could be meeting with you or, um, while you record, I don't know if you're an artist, but while you record the, uh, the, that, that song, yeah. while, you, while you meet with other guys in the creative process. It could, be, could be that, it could be a recording, it could be like having a camera and recording you in the process of. It could be then, uh, it could be, of course, then having like the pre release of. Your music and the pre-release of a gig. I mean, these. I'm not saying anything that is completely um, that is uh, revolutionary, but I see a lot. of This is something that I see in startups. So even with non-music, people struggle because like, oh, there's a lot of time. I have to do all this stuff. The key thing is to try to find a way with a part of the content that can be that its purpose can be put in many, many, many different boxes at the same time or over time. So okay, I have a bit here. I can be oh, I, I could I could. I work with a lot of startups here. There are a lot of very early stage startups. They create they create uh, apps. Some of them become very successful. One of the ways that uh, I introduce, I do that sometimes. So you know, they need they need actually music for as a you know for for their games. And they say, you know what? Here are musicians, and you can take 30 seconds out of something you already done. This is the game. This maybe this is not what you like. I'm not saying that this is the solution. The idea is to find ways to actually. Um, um, disseminate that piece of content so that people keep coming back to the central, which is the music. But I, I think the money is not in the music, the money is in, and I'm sorry to talk about all the money, is the concert, is the experience, when you get around here. I'm, I'm going to sit, like I said before, I'm going to sit and watch you play in front of me. Nobody can take that, that away from me. Or I'm going to sit 
what you with your with your band if you have a band talking about music. Nobody can take that away from me. Or again, of course, attend a concert where it's a pre-release. That's what I meant by reward gratification when I said reward gratification are very two very strong points in human beings, strong behaviors. They're not exactly the same. People are always confuse. And the, the easy way to think about it is if you ever get into a club or even like a concert, it can be VIP, right? The, VI, the, the gratification is to pass in, every, in front of everyone else and look at VIP, bragging rights. That's the gratification. That's instant gratification. The reward is much longer. It's, it lasts much longer it's because I was at a concert and I had that unique experience. So this is what you have to create, try to attempt to create in people's mind is that sentiment of reward and wow, it was there. I can tell my grandkids, whatever. But that is the try. It's not easy. I'm not, it's easy for me again to pontificate. But the successes that I've seen in content-driven uh, industries is often that. Sorry, that was a long answer. No, that was a long answer. At some point, I would like to say that uh, Troy Carter, the ex-manager of Lady yeah. Gaga, yeah. at some point he said, music now can sell everything but music. <laughs> Pretty much. Yeah. So, so this is, we sell things on top of music, and but music is the reason that people... If you look, at, if you look at a band like, and I'm sorry, I know nobody, nobody likes them anymore. If you look at a band like Iron Maiden back in the 80s, they had no radio or airplay. There are no, they, they were not an NTV ever. Not, none of it, right? They were the anti-traditional type of band. They still go, they still do gigs with 80,000 uh, 80, people. There are Donington uh, this summer, I think. Donington is it? If you're they from are, there. but it's got a very special experience. I was reading that the other day. Yeah, I, I've been to five of their gigs, uh, two in, in, in Latin America and three uh, in Europe. Again, it's not what they, it's actually, it's a gig. It's that what I remember is that experience. And it was also as a kid, they understood pretty early that there was, you know, it was the, again, okay, I know it was the touch, the, the touch thing that has disappeared, it was the, you know, the LP, the, the, the carver, it was everything that went around it. They, they played very well in that sense of identity that nobody has, that, uh, that, that and it, it felt, I felt like somebody understood me, yeah, Mollocks, they were a band, but still, there was this kind of feeling of experience that I didn't have with any other band. At least for me, that's just a bit of the same experience that you can feel sometimes at electronic music festivals when you have people completely, and it's not because they have drugs. And it's, of course, maybe for some, I don't do drugs, and I'm still completely, you know, like I'm in there. Sorry, you want, you want to say no, something? Just, just on that point, a really valid point about the experience. I made a massive band, you know, still got a big following playing the concert, and yeah. they're organizing um, a flyover yeah. of like 80 war planes or something crazy. During their during their, their concert, so the whole point is that anybody goes to that, you're not going to get that if you're on if you watch it on DVD afterwards, or you know you're going to get this crazy flyby. So it's the experience of it. I mean, they have really much more money, but what they did as well, for instance, they, they charter every two years now because the the, the, the singer Bruce Dickinson is a is a pilot. They charter they charter a 757, uh, put it with all the decor outside, and it actually fly. People like me have never done it, sadly, but from concert to concert, and you can go from gig to gig with the band sitting next to you. I mean, of course, that's not a pliable work at an early start in music, but that's the idea. God, I could sit with them and have a chat, right? It's like, wow, holy shit. I'm sorry for the camera, but this is cool, right? You're just not quite sad enough yet. Sorry. Once you're a little sadder, you will take that trip. <laughs> yeah, no problem. No, no problem. Because that's the thing. That's, I mean, I don't know, you know, like I said here, I'm a bad musician. I don't. You know, I used to sing a bit and play the piano. That was pretty much it. Right? I used to do some drums. But music is the only thing that has ever created like these feelings, and to this to this day, still creates this feeling within me that nothing else has ever. Right? Nothing else. It's music. I I say music is the soundtrack of my life. I listen to a piece of music. I can tell you exactly where it was. I have this kind of memory, which year, and what I was doing. And I have a very strong memory with that. And I think. Not everybody is maybe exactly like that, but a lot of people, when you talk about music, they get passionate. And honestly, there's nothing else in terms of content, in terms of industries I can create. That. I work with brands. You know, my, my job, because I work with startups, when I get paid, I work with these massive brands. They're like, oh, we need to sell this. Okay, how can we make this sexy and appealing to consumers? So they have to create or, make, or even fake that passion. With music, you don't need that. It's already there. You just need to kind of find ways to actually just reach the people, but the <coughs> passion and the branding, it, I almost don't need it. Because for me, branding, by the way, is not marketing in terms of the logo. Branding is a philosophy of what it is. Music has within itself a philosophy. 
Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, I was just gonna. Oh, by the way, I'm still an Iron Maiden fan. <laughs> see me too. You got to see them like two weeks. <laughs> Sunnysphere Festival. Oh, wow, awesome. Yeah. Oh, so so jealous. jealous. Yeah, the Sunnysphere with Metallica and uh, Great Man. Okay, back to the discussion. <laughs> <laughs> just a you um, see, but that's kind of thing that. By the way, sorry to interrupt. That's the kind of thing that not a lot of people, not a lot of people, you cannot say that about. Uh, uh, even with a phone. People are passionate about their phones nowadays. You cannot say, ah, oh, where's the air? And you look and, ah, oh, uh, why didn't you, didn't you go? It's still a phone. Music has this that nothing else can. So, sorry, go yeah, ahead. Yeah, but, but it's true. I've been waiting for the moment to come, like for months. Yes. You got the ticket and now it's a trip and I have to get up. I don't even have where to sleep, <laughs> but I have a ticket. <laughs> so, you know, that's, yeah, it's experience. <laughs> it's an experience. But to add to yeah. what you were saying, uh, I think that musicians, we have this problem that we always are looking for what is it that we have to do like now we all want to be in Spotify then we all wanted to be in, in Nikes then we all and I was I was thinking the other day like about the biggest changes that have been through history in the, in the music industry and for me it was like the invent of the gramophone the, the CDs Napster illegal downloads and iTunes like they, they've all changed the way the industry used to work before. Yeah. And if you think about it, none of those inventions were made by musicians. I or by like, like uh, software developers. People yeah. who used to think different. Yeah. It's not that you don't, you don't have to be a musician, but just try to step out of what everybody's thinking. And there's a lot of ways to go which are going to change. But not trying to find out what is it that everybody's doing. This is why I said before, when I said think laterally, is that by being in London, for those who are in London or in the UK in general, you have a, a, a thriving ecosystem of young startups, early stage startups, and software, and software um, uh, writers and entrepreneurs. And the reason that the ones that are successful is because they mix a lot of different angles together. You know, there's a reason besides the success of, of this. There's a reason that Steve Jobs is so much often quoted and was successful. He was not a manager. He went, he lived in India, in an ashram. He learned about calligraphy, you know, the art of uh, writing font. But he had like these view, and he could connect all this and then make a product. Yeah, of course, he had other uh, attributes. What I'm trying to say here is that he was already someone who had like different lateral thinking, different boxes that can just like crossover. So, and not everybody's like that. I'm not like that. I have some of it. I don't have other, you know, other stuff, but not other, but I, I seek out to others. I looked, you know, the way you said, there were these, the gramophone, the tape, the uh, CD yeah, you mentioned, was, were not were created by, by uh, technologists, by uh, uh, software engineers. It used to be that these software engineers would, would have been in a very big corporations and untenable. Now these same software, I mean, Spotify, when I met them, or there were 10. They were, you could just hang out and start with them. So that's luck. I'm not saying that you'll be able to do that. But it's, there's potential in meeting the way Lady Gaga, and it's not a perfect example, but that's the one that matters in the UK. You can find people that do something that could be relevant. You know, let's do something together. They're not a musician. They're, they're, you're not a software engineer, but maybe by mixing this, there's something. Yes, just trying to take it, yes, out of the common that we used to think of alike. And like we're all trying to do now the same videos. Now everybody wants to do one song. Now everybody wants to do like everybody's following the same paths. So we're just gonna be stuck. And the first one who does it, that's the one who, who wins. And then often the rest so, we're just much copying. So. Yeah, it's not a, it's not as simple as we know, right? Yeah. yeah. So we still have the, the industry is very strong at creating yeah. hits as well. But okay. Yeah. My uh, Tommy story about an experience yeah. we're developing with with a band. Uh, some of people here went to the first one. It's an experience where we want to uh, try to understand the music with the five senses of the body. Yeah. So we have this song, we make a performance, which is just listening to the song, but the only way you can go inside and listen to the song is by using also your smell and your taste, and there's heat. The first song we did it with is a song that we created in the jungle in Colombia. So there's projections about the jungle while you listen to the song, but the space smells like the jungle, and, it, and we heat the room until we reach the temperature of the Amazonas, and we people is drinking the beverage that 
inspired the song. So, yeah, well, it's not drinking exactly that beverage, it's like uh, something similar. <laughs> but, <laughs> but, but yeah, like people are, it's just one song, it's the same thing, it's just one song, but it's not, let's make a video. And the release we did of the song, it's not like, let's do a show where you invite people, because everybody to release a song does a show and invites people. We just took people to a pub, to a small space in a pub, and got them to sweat and have drinks and just watch the video and it was different because people have been like emailed me about it. that was different i remember your song because it was it was another thing it was completely another thing yeah these are these are i mean this is great i mean honestly especially the, the thing in colombia wow i mean these are the kind of thing i'm sure you remember i mean it's maybe not repl replicable but as i said before everything is a remix fine this is i think you said it pretty pretty well the music is is still the most important thing, yet it's not where the money is. That's sad or it is not sad, I don't know, it's just a fact, right? So and this is where I think you have to come to focus on everything that's around it. That's where it doesn't it will not solve I don't have a silver bullet, nor nor there is a, a one size fits all. There's not a one size fits all solution. I could tell you uh, the five key <coughs> things is this, this and this. It will be sorry BS because this is, it's, it doesn't exist. Each of us and each of the, the successes I've mentioned is easy. There are successes. We, of course, nobody mentions the, the failures because we've never seen them, actually. But uh, in the, the essence is try these kind of <coughs> lateral connections, I think. Uh, I, I believe, I think. Yeah, and it's not, and what you say, it's not uh, starting from zero, creating something that's never been there. But the remixing is the best tool, like trying to get out, not, not only the music industry, try to see theater. Actually, the, the whole concept came from a, from the theater we saw and so it's another industry and another industry and trying to remix it to your thing. Oh, by the way, I'm sorry I will interrupt you. I know because copying, copying, right, is something that has a very bad meaning in Western civilizations, especially in the West. If you go, and this is why sometimes people complain about China, for example, they copy everything. But you know what? So, Seoul. South Korea. There's this big uh, the name losing right now. There's this big temple right in the middle of Seoul. It's very famous. It's made of wood. Right? And in 2006, it burned it. It burned down to the ground. Completely ashes. Nothing. They rebuilt the same thing on spec. Right. So it's the exact same looking temple. A foreigner, a Westerner, would be like, "Ah, that's a copy. I want to see the original." <laughs> there, they don't care. It's the same. They don't have this notion of, oh, I want to see the cathedral when a thousand years old. So the notion of copying and the acceptance of remix, remixing, remixing stuff is different. We are held back a lot. I'm not saying that we should black, blatantly copy everyone else, but this, the notion of remixing is still sometimes we do it with guilt. I mean, only uh, hip hop music, <coughs> EDM, electronic music were kind of able to go a little bit out because there were the assumption that they were. We were mixing from the get from the start, but talking about experiences, I think it's okay to remix, and we should actually kind of lift that mental block, having a feel guilty that if you release something successful in releasing uh, 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 your music, I shouldn't do it. Well, why not? I could actually even talk to you and say, "I do something similar." It's okay. It doesn't have to be shameful, even if people will still shame you for it. Go ahead. Yeah, my mind is still wandering around the idea of copyright. Whether it, it was just an invention so they can create scarcity and sell it, or it's something that now it's not, it's irrelevant. It's I think. very hard. It just, it, it just pro protects, you know, this this notion of copying. Although for me, it would be more create, would create, create more the, creative thing. I mean, the thing is, I mean, I, 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 copyright was partially obviously done, especially in the content industry, to protect to. Uh, uh, you didn't own the music, you owned the copy, and you couldn't copy it yourself. You owned the CD, again, you didn't own the music, so you were just, that was... But, but I understand the private... But you're already talking about the consumer. No, I'm gonna, yes, that's why, uh, it's exactly where I was going now. But let's put the other way around, like, like you were about to tell me. It's, copyright still has, I mean, the, the, the capitalism I was talking before, I was talking about before, like it or hate the word, I don't care is also based on property rights. So you own, you own your, your stuff, right? It's true that when it comes for contents of music, which is not a piece of land or a building, it's 
the notion is can be harder, but it, it's, it remains that there are still uh, a lot of pros into maintaining copyright. I, I still believe so. I, maybe we went too far with copyright. I mean, the notion of what is copyrightable has been maybe too strict, but I also understand that artists, creators, builders have to be defended a bit because otherwise you'd say, okay, I create something very great and tomorrow a big incumbent comes, copies everything, rips you off and just basically just sells it. So there's still value, it's hard. I mean, when you're on one end, you're like, oh, I wish there was no copyright because I know and you know, I trust myself that I'm not gonna do it for evil purposes. But at the same time, sometimes an artist that might have been ripped off, it's like, yeah, I wish somebody would actually protect me. So there's a balance here. I don't know where it stands. To, uh, to address your question. I don't know exactly where it stands. I don't think copyright will disappear as it's evolving. Uh, one of the movements I truly believe in as an artist, if I come back in an artist way, the Creative Commons. You probably all know Creative Commons. I've been uh, working with them on some projects. Uh, I think Creative Commons, I use for, I do photography a lot. I think all my pictures, I don't know that I'm just gonna sell them. I'm not like some star or whatever, but I put them in Creative Commons. Most of the stuff is actually, you know, the, the, the backgrounds I'm using here on the slides are actually taken from Creative Commons Photography uh, on Flickr and Google. Uh, so you can, some of them are mine actually, but you can, I believe in that, that but that's a decision. That's, you decide not to copyright your thing, you decide to let it uh, flow, and there are many, if you don't know about Creative Commons, I mean, let's not have a discussion now, but you basically can decide at which extent you want to pro, pro, uh, pro, um, protect your, your piece of work. And I think that's very, very interesting. Uh, the last word about copyright. The reason I'm saying sometimes I'm, being, I'm a bit uh, um, as in copyright is when you see the extensions, the uh, overreach of the extent, extensions of copyright. There's only uh, you know, a, a piece of work that was done in 1920 should be you know, copyrighted for the, the rest of the eternity. At some point, Property, property rights were made to protect me, not my great, great, great grandchildren. At some point, there should be there a balance. And I think this is also, this is a debate that will keep on <coughs> going. So sorry, it was a long answer again. Who has uh, it? Uh, yeah. Sorry. Uh, sorry, my name's Tom. Uh, I, I'm a musician, I'm also a technologist, actually. Um, and I, I used to work in the uh, video games industry, and uh, there's quite an interesting model from that, which I sometimes apply to, to the uh, music thing, which is the freemium model mm -hmm. in games. And I can see you can kind of apply the same kind of thing to music. So there are, with, with streaming models, you know, there are people who will never pay for your music. And streaming is perfect for them. But then there are people who might want to have uh, access to that music early. They might pay a small amount. There are people who might then go to your concert, they'll give you a bit more. And it's really, with, with premium model, they find, they, they make most of their revenue from, I think it's something like, a typical freemium game, only 3 to 5% of people will ever pay anything. And they make about 60% of their revenue from like 0.1% of their audience base. And uh, it's quite, I just wondered what you might think about I think, that. I think, that it's, a, I think it's one of the valid models. I mean, that's uh, yeah. what well, I said before, they're, they're a replaceable type of content that you can actually um, ramp up, I would say. Uh, I think it's valid, I don't think it's... Uh, there's a, let's look at there. There's a debate also in gaming up to when, but I agree. There's always a small segment. This is it scares a lot of people, I guess, musicians as well, because you say, oh, 95 percent of people do not pay. I'm not going to do any money. But the thing is, uh, more often than not, out of the five percent, there will be a one or two percent that will be very, very high that will pay for. It. I'm the kind of guy who's when I really love music because I have a great uh, uh, speakers at home. Uh, especially for classical music, I will still go and buy the, the CD just to be able to have lossless format because that's not downloadable yet. I mean, some of it is on, on, on some uh, some sites, but basically. And, I, and then I just discard the CD. I, I give it to charity, actually, not discard it, but just because I want to have the absolute perfect sound. That's just temporary because prob most probably uh, in, in, in three to five years with broadband speeds, these type of formats would be available. But there are people like me that for specific stuff, attending a concert or like would actually be and these are the key people that you have you don't have to forget about 95 because we use the term conversion at some point part of 95 will convert meaning they will become a paid user they can be after two years after three years after five years of listening to you or you know I, i'm a kid i'm listening to iron maiden the only the only the first ones i had were mixtapes for my friends 
it was the uh, early stage MP3 or whatever, right? I was not paying for it. But then I started, I started paying for some with money I earned on summer jobs. At some point, I started working so I could pay for more. I mean, it's, that's a conversion model. It takes, it takes a long time. But uh, to come back, I think yes. We could have a debate about if premium is always good or not, but I think the, the idea is, is good. I agree. And that's actually very interesting if you have that kind of. Uh, actually, background. Yeah, background. actually, I don't like free movement at all, actually. But because I, with I music, it could be well, really something. Well, not free movement in the game context, but uh, I think from the from point of view, yeah, it can make sense. That's a great artist here. Go ahead. Are we want to wrap it up and have a beer downstairs or something? I don't know. This is, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> not for me, for you, these guys. If you see. <laughs> beer, beer. <laughs> Said the German. It's a surprise. <laughs> yeah, eventually, I wanted to introduce to just get something from this about people converting and about people getting connected. So ultimately for me this is what I see in music and this is what I believe so much in Philippe's project and my projects are interactive and theatrical as well. It's because I see that music is now a connector for people. So what nobody does, and I would like to see a lot of musicians doing, is people come to your concerts for your music because you represent something. We have Nate Maynard who is really eco-friendly with everything. He collects people, like ties them together about storytelling. Music is about collecting, people, uh, connecting people, and also I see yeah. yes, exactly. So no kids music. Uh, so I, I believe that in the future we're going to have emerging platforms of musicians as connectors, so they will get people together about their interests. As you said, back in the, in the school time. Can I? Yeah, go ahead. Sorry, sorry. Go ahead. I just because I think here is a. Okay. Uh, just a silly example of what I'm doing because uh, I'm a Spanish singer, so my audience, I'm a little fans are in Argentina, and I want to reach like all Latin America and, and Spain as well. So what I thought, because I changed recently my name up because of my uh, like I was pursuing like the wrong thing. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yep. So now what I'm trying to say, uh, I build a website so people can register for free. And I'm posting like exclusive con content on, on this side, so on the other side I have the emails, right? But when I, I'm, I'm recording like a, I'm recording a lot of videos and I'm talking about community and, and telling them, hey, uh, I have a vision. Everyone in the future, we are going to be all artists because we are going to be in art, you know. If we are like truly connected with ourselves, and I want to to build a community of people interested in. I mean, to connect that. Sorry, my English is not helping. No, that's okay. But I'm telling Very these guys that I want to, to build a community, and I'm talking about light or love or real things in life, like me, because I think that artist needs to, to say something, you know? Nobody's saying nowadays, you know, or very few. And I'm having like a truly positive response of people, like massively. Uh, for what is me, you know, my expectation. Like follow me on Twitter, maybe in two weeks, like uh, a thousand followers or something like that. Some people send me like private message, like some of them ask me for advices and stuff, but others say, uh, like, I like what you're doing, I like your music, this is great, and lots of free tweets and whatever, but I think, I think community is yeah. future, I mean. And it, 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 that's, that's why I mentioned the very early, it's the reach. I mean, communities now is not only your village, city, town, it's pretty much everywhere, uh, every, everywhere. You can be here and having, and yeah, it's still great to have email. I mean, I'm not going to do, customer life is called customer lifetime value. <laughs> if you have the email, then you can actually also pr give them uh, access to experiences over time. So, oh, you had access to that, uh, I don't want to go into tactics. But there is, I think, again, it's, you, your example is telling about how passionate people can be around something that's completely intangible. And they, you can then, will you or you can't content be the leader? It doesn't really matter. What matters is that you can, you can actually achieve that. And I wish you the best of luck uh, to achieve that. Right. We're about to hit like two hours. Yeah, exactly. Any, any last comments or questions? I'm okay with just saying that, I mean, at some point, maybe. Romeo. I'll give a quick one because I know somebody might want to get in the pub. Maybe some others as well. Um, it's just, it's more of a, an observation, but. I think so many artists nowadays, musicians but other creative people as well, um, complaining, you know, oh, it's so difficult to make money in the industry, blah, blah, blah. But I think that too many people are looking at what they consider to be a viable career financially in the past of what has been. So you look at 
whoever the big bands were that you grew up with, Iron Maiden or whoever it is, big acts, and you're thinking in music in terms of success means millions of pounds, yeah. big tours, etc. But the irony is that almost, probably almost except for um, accommodation, everything nowadays is a hell of the cost of living in the Western world anyway is a hell of a lot cheaper. There's access to pretty much everything. I mean, even travelling around London, people are going to say, oh, it's gone up in price, but yeah, actually but the value is, has, has increased massively. You've got, yeah, you can make videos on your phone, you can send them to everyone the world. So the, the ability to be a successful musician, a successful artist nowadays, um, doesn't require, I think, all that much in terms of revenue. So in terms of meeting an audience, and this comes on to sort of your points about community, it's not about the 95% of people who access your freemium model and don't pay you anything. It's about those 5% who, when they do pay, as you said, the luxury end of things increasing, they'll happily pay more because of the sense of community and because of the support. And then I've made the choice to pay for that. And then I've made the choice. And what happens is that um, an interest, well, I won't go into too many things, but with choice, oftentimes if you give someone the choice to pay more, you know, the whole thing, for example, pay what you want. Yeah, they really want. The, the key guys will actually pay more than they needed to because, as my friend said, who, who keeps buying guys' CD whenever he sees them, the guy, the artist says to him, you asked me to sign the CD, buy it off me every single time. And he said, I just like giving you money. <laughs> you know, no need to do that, but, but that's, the whole, you know, that's the whole point. It's getting those few guys, sorry. And so... I didn't put the slide there because otherwise it was too long. I have one, I can I can send it through for the... There's one quote about, and it's a scientific quote, uh, how the crowd I think the crowd, any type of crowd is actually the empathy of the crowd is much more it's always been there. I mean when you someone is falling not always in cities because they're leaving some bastards in terms of someone is falling in the hell, how people have behave in the tube or the leaf, you know, the seat. There is a behavior of crowds that has some bad side, but the good behavior of crowds is exactly what we're tapping into. Uh, example is it about uh, how much you want to pay and not pay. Uh, and, uh, and uh, more often than not, people pay more, and they will actually pay more because, again, they will, <coughs> since you have less ownership, the amount that is available to access your experiences will be actually higher on average, and thus, well, but that will be a choice. If I pay for, if I'm one of the 5% paying to access for your music, it's not because I have to, it's not because I have to show off for status, it's because I want to. In that sense, this is a, uh, in Japan, you say uh, when you have a customer you have for life, it's a bit what it says. And then I'll finish, because then we'll go to the pub. I'll finish, I would say that the, 50, the last 50, 70 years of the music industry are actually been an anomaly in the history of music. And that's the problem we have. It, it used to be that most of the music made before that time has basically disappeared. We have a very small extract, which is called classical music, that has stayed with us. But if you think about it, classical music, most of it, not all of it, was because you had a king, you had a mentor, you had someone who actually paid for it. So it was limited, it was totally undemocratic. It was one guy being paid by the absolute ruler. And this is why this music stayed for so long. And then the democracy happened, but the democracy was a top-down democracy for the last seven years, uh, 70 years. It was, since it was so expensive, there are very few people, it was not one king, it was a record label was choosing which will be the chosen one and will put you in the process and will send your, your CD, LP, whatever, to the masses, for, to the consumer. And I think what we're, we're ha arriving now is at the end of the anomaly where it's not going to be one, it's one, it's many to many. And it's hard because when you were the chosen one, yeah, that's great, I'm the chosen one, there's no competition. Uh, and suddenly there's competition. So it's, I think we're reaching the end Maybe not now, maybe next 10 to 20 years, the end of that anomaly. And it will be more distributed, it will be harder maybe to break through, but it will actually uh, require more uh, creativity from all of And I'll, I'll finish on that. Or what, what I, and look what happened to Mozart. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, that, I have this, this, is this is why I like bringing people like Paul that are not in the music industry. Because this way we get these amazing insights and we can connect things, we can disconnect what we know and connect in a different way. And this way we can innovate and come up with new stuff because we're here for making new stuff. I would really like to thank you for being here. Uh, this was Dark Community Talks for this month. I hope you got tremendous value just like I did. And I really love this community, these, this cozy little place that we're discussing about these new ideas. Um, 
If you'd like to talk about it, use the hashtag Dalky Music Talk so everybody can see and we can later connect. I'll send you an email tonight when I go home before I get the bus to go to the airport to fly to Spain for Dalky Music Talks Barcelona tomorrow. Bragging so I'll send you <laughs> Yes. Don't me. So I'll send you all the slides and all the resources that Paul will send me and also the way to contact Paul and yeah, keep going with the conversation. Thanks again. Let's go downstairs to have a beer and uh, Ooh, this is Paul.